Oh yeah, what's up YouTube TV back here in this video more ghost gameplay for you guys playing domination on whiteout I go completely off I get like 58 kills. I go off with the maniac I just knife everyone that I see and it's completely awesome only allowed five minutes of gameplay per map So I had to edit it down a little bit to conserve time But showing you guys the most action-packed parts of the game and hopefully you guys are entertained anyways getting into some more multiplayer details I'm gonna talk about some game types Search and Rescue. I thought it played very well, actually. I don't know if it's going to be completely viable for competitive gameplay, but it's definitely a different strategy needed for that search and destroy, you know, one life to type of style. You can't really play for picks because, you know, if you kill them, they drop a dog tag. If, if their teammates pick it up, they just spawn up with their teammates again. So, you know, you can't just camp. You need to, you know, use a lot more teamwork, communication, etc. To make sure every kill you get, you get, you grab that tag and make sure it's you know worthwhile, and you get a lot of points for doing so. Also, so anyways, um, I think if we tweak it a little bit, you know the the round timer, etc., we can maybe make it viable for comp, like competitive gameplay. But I don't know if we really want to play search and destroy and search and rescue, you know, in a you know best of whatever map set. So. Moving on, domination felt pretty good as well. The they seem to the spawn points seemed very consistent. You know, depending on what flag you had, you know, if you had like an A and B cap set up, you'd spawn. You know, you know, in between A and B. If you only had C, you'd spawn in like the back right. You know, the water side sort of the area. And if you were getting trapped at A, you know, you'd spawn at like the truck side of A. So I thought the spawn points were very consistent depending on you know what flag you had, what flag you didn't, and you know when people were capping, etc. It felt really good. Hopefully we, we will be able to use Domination on some of the other maps, to, but we just don't really know yet, so we'll find out. Uh, cranked, the, you know, Cracked Out TDM was a lot of fun to play also. Very fun to play with, you know, with friends. I feel like that'll be one of the most popular game types in public matches. Just because, it's, you know, it's what Call of Duty's about. Killing shit, running around really fast, you know, is awesome. A bun awesome game to play with your friends. You know, you have to get a kill within 30 seconds and you, you know, gain speed, etc. when you're running around the map. It basically creates an incentive to move fast so really enjoyed cranked moving on um I, as far as crank goes for you know competitive i don't think any kill dependent game mode will really work playing against you know the top players of top tier they just you know they'll play it super methodical and not go for many kills but i, I don't know something we should definitely try though um the streaks in more detail i'm gonna talk about the you know different kill streaks you can get First, I'm going to talk about the ones, I mean, obviously we're only allowed to use a couple of them. This, the SATCOM, the, you know, escort dog, as I like to call it. You get one dog to call in. And then the maniac suit as well. And the owl, which I want to talk about. So basically, the SATCOM is like your normal UAV type of thing you get in every other Call of Duty. Except you get like a box type of thing, which you throw down on the map. Depending on how many of those, you know, boxes you have at the same time, with, with like within your team, the more you sort of, you know, group together the more powerful the effect over you know that 30 seconds becomes so basically if you have one on the map you get this sort of weird looking through walls like basically if your teammate sees an enemy through the map you can like get an outline of them it's not very strong it's not overpowered at all and you know before i you know move on there's a uav jammer type of perk so it's it's not really overpowered at all by any means so if you're worried about getting called out via that satcom you just throw on that perk and you're good to go so it basically cancels out anything you need to be worrying about. Moving on, if you get two of them, you get uh, you know weak UAV, three like a stronger UAV, and if you get four staggered at the same time, you get an advanced UAV, which you know it waves and you can see the direction the enemy is going, etc. So it's really not too strong. I feel like they did it right. Moving on, the owl is basically like an escort, uh, like orb, I guess you could say. So that thing follows you around. And blocks all the you know tacticals, lethals, etc. So you never get hit by nades, you know that the nine bang, etc. Moving on, talk about the nine bang. It's like the EMP sort of thing, but you really need to use the strong arm perk to be able to throw it across the map anywhere. And also, there's like a C4 type of thing, but you don't trigger it on your own. It like triggers by itself, so it's like a claymore C4 mix. So I thought that was pretty cool as well. But you can always use flak jacket to you know counter those. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little intel video on the new multiplayer. I go off. Look at that school board. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.